Good morning and welcome back to the second lecture of the short course on microclimate for cultural heritage within the SOS Heritage Project. This lecture will focus on standards and guidelines on the microclimate for preventive conservation. This is the second lecture of the course. After the first one, which gave an introduction on the microclimate for sustainable conservation of cultural heritage, and will be followed by a lecture on how to manage microclimate monitoring and control for cultural heritage. Before delving into the topic, I want to give you some brief definitions. Standardization is the process of implementing and developing technical standards, which are documents designed to be used as guidelines and whose development is based on the consensus among different stakeholders and governed by the principle of openness and transparency. Standard bodies can act on different scales. On an international scale, we have the International Organization for Standardization, the ISO, while at the European level, there is the European Committee for Standardization. At the national level, every country has its own standardization body. For example, in Italy, we have the Ente Italiano di Normazione, which is responsible to draft and publish the UNI standards. The International Organization for, Standardiz for Standardization was established in 1946 and nowadays involves more than 150 countries from all over the world. In 2022, it included more than 250 technical committee, committees and have already uh, published more than 24,000 standards acting on an international level. Here on the map, you can see the member bodies and the correspondent members spread all over the world, so covering most of the countries uh, uh, worldwide. The Technical Committee 46, and in particular the Subcommittee 10, is of interest for cultural heritage because it's focused on requirements for document storage and conditions for preservation. Here you can see the participating members and the observing members on the map and an example on the ISO 11799, published in 2015, which is the second edition of a previous version published in 2003, which should be used as a reference for document storage requirements for archive and library materials. At the European level, we have the European Committee for Standardization, which is a public organization established 15 years after the ISO 1 in 1961 and consists of members from national standardization bodies for, from 34 European countries. In 2022, it included more than 390 technical committees, 75 workshops and 45 subcommittees and more than 1,500 working groups. The organization of the European Committee for Standardization includes a general assembly, an, admi an administrative board, and technical board acting on planning. Then, uh, at the programming level, we have technical committees, which are division bodies with precise scopes and work program, which are established by the technical board, and technical committee management groups established by the technical committee to undertake specific short-term tasks. These tasks are restricted to individual experts, which can be appointed by the parent technical committee or by the SEN national members. The stages in the development of the standards include the initiation of new work items, and then in the drafting of documents building consensus around given topics among the, among the experts involved in the working groups. Then it follows a public consultation, the technical comment review, and the draft amendment. Finally, there's the approval of the document, the publication, and after some years, the review of the document.
Within the committee, the European Committee for Standardization, there is a technical committee specifically devoted on cultural heritage, is the TC346. It includes 16 working groups and has already published more than 30 standards. In particular, 16, 16 are the standards on the environmental topic, which were published uh, within the working groups four on the environment, the working group six about exhibition lighting, and working group seven uh, specifying and measuring indoor and outdoor climate conditions for preservation. Among the standards that have been published by the Technical Committee 346, we can see here key areas and related standards, in particular in the area about methodologies, procedures and instruments for monitoring, we can refer to three main standards about temperature, humidity and moisture content procedures and instruments for measuring. The, um, the European norm 1575-8, published in 2010, is about procedures and instruments for measuring temperatures of the air and surfaces of the objects. The 16242 is about uh, instruments for measuring humidity of the air and the moisture exchanges between the air and cultural properties. The European norm 1668-2, the latest one published in 2017 contains recommendation and definition of methods of, me of measurements of moisture content or water content in immovable cultural heritage materials. In the key area about specification to limit conditions that might pose object at risks, the most important one is, is the 1575-7, published in 2010, which contains specification for temperature and relative humidity to limit climate-induced mechanical damage in organic hygroscopic materials. In particular, it contains the definition of the historical climate, which is the one that should be maintained every time a conservator or an expert in conservation guarantees that the microclimate conditions do not harm the conservation of organic hygroscopic materials. So it's the reference climate to which objects have adapted in, the, in time and that should be maintained in order to conserve them. The second technical specification 16.16.3 of 2014 contains guidelines and procedures for choosing appropriate lighting for indoor exhibition. And it's nowadays um, under revision from the working group. Finally, the 16893 of 2018 is about specification for location construction and modification of buildings or rooms intended for the storage and use of heritage collections. The last key area covers the strategies for an informed management of spaces. The standard 15759, first part published in 2011, contains the guidelines for eating churches, chapels and other places of worship. And the second part, the 15759 part 2 of 2011, uh, 11 is about the ventilation management for the protection of cultural heritage buildings and collections. The 15999, the first part of 2014, contains the um, guidelines for design of showcases for exhibition and preservation of objects, general requirements, and the 16883 of 2017 contains the guidelines for improving the energy performance of historical buildings. Finally, in the framework of European standardization, I want to give an introduction of green papers, which are documents published by the European Commission to, to stimulate discussion at European level. So green papers invite relevant parties bodies or individuals to participate in a consultation process and debate on the basis of the proposal put forward. 
For example, here you can see the green paper which was published last year about multi-material preventive conservation guidelines. This green paper was drafted within the Collection Care Project under the coordination by the group of experts in microclimate studies of Sapienza University of Rome and is devoted to the application of the standards published by the Technical Committee 346. This was the end of our brief lecture on the European standards for preventive conservation. I wish to acknowledge the contribution from Dr. Francesca Frasca for the preparation of these slides, and I hope that you could find interesting materials for the application to your cultural institutions. Here is my orchid profile, where you can find me for any curiosity or questions about the topic. See you on the next lecture.